So really excited to dive in with you guys today over the most popular gemstone for Jaeger rings, which is... Blue Sapphire. Which was made popular by... Princess Diana. Okay, and we're gonna cover a whole variety of stuff for you guys today. So we're gonna go into uh, all the different factors that are gonna affect pricing. We're gonna cover why carrot is completely meaningless for sapphires, heat treatment, uh, created sapphires versus ones that are mined. And we're even gonna kind of show you guys the variations in blue that blue sapphires come in, that there's a much wider array than a lot of people are aware of. Strap in. So we saw a huge surge in using a blue sapphire for your engagement ring after Prince William proposed to Kate Middleton with Princess Diana's blue sapphire ring. The two main factors that most people will think about when it comes to blue sapphires, and it's going to probably have a large effect on the price, is going to be the, the color. And then the other thing is whether the stone is eye clean or not. Generally, you're going to have two polar opposites in, in um, the color saturation. So on one end, you might get a barely blue sapphire, so just like a hint of blue maybe. On the other extreme end, you can get so much, um, or it might even look almost opaque, like you can get some blue sapphires that look quite dark. Um, when you have like a deep, rich color, you know, a lot of people will think of the stone in um, Princess Diana's ring as a good example, is like this deep blue, some people have even called it a cornflower blue, is, the term that's sometimes thrown around. And you're gonna pay the biggest premium for a blue like that, definitely. Exactly, yeah, and then, so there's that. Um, so the intensity of the color is, is a huge factor. The other thing that we wanna to touch base on is uh, clarity. And so, and it's very different, I wanna say, than clarity than that's referred to in diamonds. So when diamonds, there's like a whole scale. When it comes to blue sapphires, it, there's no standardized grading, and that's important to note. So. Really honestly, in the trade, um, often people, when they look at a gemstone, a blue sapphire, they just honestly say, is it eye clean or not? Really subjective, but um, yeah, obviously if you have a stone that has an imperfection that is eye, eye clean, maybe you cannot see it, um, basically without magnifying it, it, that's gonna sell for a higher premium, obviously, than one where you can see the imperfection. Yeah, and whereas when a diamond, you know, there can be over 30 different types of inclusions, you can kind of see that. I find that when uh, when a gemstone, when a blue sapphire in particular is uh, is included, I mean, you, you might see some cloudiness or you're not going to see a nice saturation in the color. The variations in color vary quite a bit. So we kind of, I, you know, we reference some of the more, um, you know, unfavorable and of the spectrum, okay. But um, you know, you're gonna see some that have a lighter blue, which is quite beautiful. They're all thin from Sri Lanka. Almost yeah. a lavender kind of hint to it. Yeah. And then you can get like the other, the other kind of blues that often um, command a premium is kind of that deep blue that we refer to that you see in a Princess Diana type of sapphire. And so I find that, you know, that's a usually an either or, you know, if you see them, we usually find that clients, you know, like one of the two. And we encourage you, if you're interested, make sure you get the opportunity to see one of the two. So just so diamonds have lab-grown diamonds as well as mined natural diamonds, sapphires can be lab-created or mined through the earth. Um, so probably the biggest difference is gonna be if we're gonna choose a lab-created sapphire, um, they come in very standardized colors because they're simulating the highest grade, the highest premium, rarest, gemstone that you would find in nature. It's been optimized and it's standardized. Yeah, and whereas when it comes to mine diamonds, sorry, mine blue sapphires, you're gonna see them in a much bigger array, a much bigger uh, variety of blues. And so that's where, you know, you're gonna save, you know, for a lab, a lab grown blue sapphire, you may pay 10% of the equivalent in a mine uh, for what that would look like. However, the trade off is gonna be, you're gonna have one shade of blue. Whereas if you're looking for a different shade of blue, then you may want to start considering more of the mine variety. Another thing to consider with blue sapphires is the shape of the stone. And so where rounds are very popular for diamonds because of the way that they shine, they're not bad for blue sapphires, but definitely uh, other shapes like an oval or like a cushion usually have a, a better ability to show off the color of the stone. The reason why has to do with the way the faceting is and the way that light reflects. But um, really, if you see cushions, ovals, you're gonna usually notice that they show off a much more vibrancy in the, in the bluish hue or the bluish, 
the bluish color compared to around carrot. If you guys haven't watched our video on carrot, I, I definitely, you know, it, it'll be linked in the video here. However, carrot is even is super meaningless when it comes to blue sapphires. And one of the biggest reasons is blue sapphires are not cut in any standardized way. And so I'll give you an example. So you can have two oval blue sapphires. One might weigh like five carats. The other might weigh two carats. But face up, they're the exact same size. And often, you know, blue sapphires are faceted. Really, they're, they're trying to show off color is the ideal um, idea. Whereas, you know, when it comes to diamonds, you're trying to cut them to shine or reflect light. And that's not what you're necessarily trying to do when it comes to a blue sapphire. And so throw carrot out the window. Uh, we have clients that start looking around and they just throw, you know, they're saying they're looking for a certain carrot. But it honestly, what we recommend um, that's so important is look at the measurements and fixate on the measurement of what you're looking at. Because that is, that is really what you see, but it is super irrelevant when it comes to blue sapphires because they vary so much. You know, I think the last thing we'll just kind of address today is going to be heat treatment, okay? And we're not going to dive into this in too much detail, but uh, this, is in this is specifically for mine blue sapphires. But what most people often uh, will learn about is that uh, probably 90, 95% of blue sapphires are heat treated. All that it means is that it's, it's, it's been around for ages, but they basically take a blue sapphire and apply intense heat to it in that effect, what it does is it increases the saturation of blue. And this is, interestingly enough, this is considered like a norm. It's, it's very rare nowadays to find a blue sapphire that has not been treated. Now, the only reason we mention this is if you do ever come across a blue sapphire that has an amazing color that is unheated, you will pay a premium for it because of the rarity. And if that's important for you, absolutely, you will want to dive into it further. But for most people, just understand that it's, it's, it's a normative treatment that's applied really to almost all blue sapphires. All right, guys, so we talked a lot today about blue sapphires, but really the biggest takeaway for you is that gemstones, blue sapphires in particular, it's so important that you see a variety side by side. Um, mm -hmm. That way you'll be able to see different cuts, different shapes. You'll be able to see all the various color ranges and I mean, they're jewels, so you'll really be able to assess. So don't worry about, don't get too heady about it. It's all about what your eyes can see.